Hello and welcome to the first Howl's Histories of the Easter Holidays. I hope you're all keeping safe. And today we're going to be talking about the gunpowder plot and looking at was it a government conspiracy. So in 1603, Queen Elizabeth I died and she was succeeded by the son of her rival, Mary, Queen of Scots, James I. Now, he was initially tolerant of Catholics when compared to Elizabeth. He preferred to exile people rather than to execute them. Now, there were some rather optimistic hopes that amongst Catholics that he would convert to Catholicism, but these hopes were soon dashed. Now, there were two priests, William Watson and William Clark, and they hatched a plot known as the by-plot. They were going to kidnap the king and make him Catholic, but anti-Jesuit Catholic priests told the king's chief minister, a man called Robert Cecil, and the plot was foiled. The priests were executed. There was also a second Protestant plot at the start of the reign in 1603 called the Main Plot. It included some of the great and the good of the realm, including Lord Raleigh, Lord Cobham, Lord Grey de and de Wilton. And they planned to remove James because they don't think he's hostile enough to the Catholics and replace him with Arbella Stuart, who had been born in Nottingham in 1575 and lived in Hardwick Hall, just, just north of here. And she was the granddaughter of Bess of Hardwick. Now, if you've not come across Bess, Bess of Hardwick, the most incredible woman, one of the best friends of Queen Elizabeth, She'd, uh, she'd been born into an aristocratic but poor family. She'd married a rich man, an old rich man. He died and she took his wealth. And she married another old rich man who died and she took his wealth and married another old rich man. And you know, she, was, she was quite the lady, it has to be said. Well, her granddaughter, Arbella Stewart, has a claim to the throne. And the main plot is to put her on the throne. However, the, uh, the plot itself is soon foiled partly due to the behaviour of Arbella Stewart, who was um, an unpleasant spoilt brat of a, a girl, quite frankly. Uh, but the plotters, whereas the Catholic plotters are executed, the Protestant plotters are pardoned. Because James really couldn't alienate such powerful men right at the start of his reign. James also decided that as the by-plot had been foiled by other Catholics, there'd be no further persecutions of Catholics. He decided that he'd killed the plotters and that would be an end of it. And so we come to 1604. Now, on the 19th of February, James discovered that his wife, Queen Anne, had been sent a rosary by the Pope. Now you might say, big deal, but England is bitterly divided between Catholic and Protestant. The Catholics of the North, the Protestants of the South. But the country is becoming increasingly Protestant throughout Queen Elizabeth's reign and he has to be seen to be taking a stronger line against the Catholics, and now his wife has been sent this rosary by the Pope. Actions have to be taken, or as it could challenge his ability to rule England. So he responds by publicly denouncing the Catholic faith. And on the 22nd of February, he ordered that all Catholic priests and Jesuits had to leave the country, and he reimposed what we call recusancy fines, the, the fines you had to pay, if you didn't go along to a Protestant church every Sunday. Now these fines are incredibly heavy. The great landowners would have to pay £20, a huge sum, for every church service missed. Uh, minor landowners had to pay two-thirds of all their rental income, and the gentry are fined a shilling a week. So the recency fines are, are really very heavy. On the 19th of March, the king made a speech calling for the imposition of true religion, by which he meant Protestant religion, leading to 900 recusants being discovered in just a week, as suddenly all the JPs, magistrates, the great and the good, want to show James, because they want reward, the rewards of, that can come from pleasing the royal family, they want to show James that they're on his side, and they hunt out these recusants for him. And on the 25th of April, a law is passed outlawing the Catholic Church from England. And so we come to the plot. The aim is to kill the king, to kill the, pro the Privy Council, all the Protestant bishops and judges, kidnap the king's daughter, Elizabeth, from Coombe Abbey, near Coventry. Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland, would be then made regent. And so the team for the gunpowder plot start to assemble. Now, the leader is a man called Robert Catesby. 
He had taken part in a rebellion against the royal family before, what we call the Essex Rebellion in 1601. Of all the incompetent, badly planned rebellions, the Essex Rebellion is one of the worst in our history. Uh, launched, obviously, by Essex against Elizabeth I. Uh, Essex was the well was related to her former court favourite, Dudley, the man she'd fancied and probably wanted to marry, but had never been able to because of the suspicion that Dudley had killed his first wife. Probably not true. But Essex was a court favourite. However, he was unhinged. At one stage in an argument with the Queen, he tried to draw his sword and stab her. The Essex Rebellion, well, the night before the Essex Rebellion, Essex went to see the uh, premiere of a Shakespeare play. One of the great cultural events of the year. All of Europe watching. And the play was about a rebellion against the royal family. And Essex decided that it was clever, the night before his, his rebellion against the royal family, to get on stage and say to the assembled crowd, if you liked what you saw today and would like to rebel against the government, then great news, there's a rebellion tomorrow. Half the government were in the audience, and they went, oh, really? Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. When the Essex rebe rebels assembled, there were people selling sausages to the crowds who were watching to see what would happen. Because he'd advertised where the rebellion was going to go, the government had already started to set up artillery against his own house, had barred the gates against him and called up the militia. Now, Catesby took part in this Essex rebellion. He was one of these optimistic fools that thought Essex was going to get somewhere. He'd been wounded in the rebellion and heavily fined, an equivalent today of £6 million in today's money. In 1603, he had asked the Spanish to invade England and promised that he would raise up a Catholic rebellion to support the Spanish. He recruited a second man, Thomas Winter. Now, he'd been in the English army in the Netherlands fighting against the Catholic Spanish. And his father, though, had been executed as a Catholic priest. They also recruited a second former Essex rebel, a man called John Wright. Now, he was famous throughout England, renowned as the best swordsman in the land. He was something of a celebrity, and he was also a devoted Catholic. Now, Thomas Winter was sent to Flanders with John Wright's brother, Chris, to ask for Spanish help in the plot. And the Spanish at this time ruled Belgium, and they're at war with what we now call the Netherlands, because the, the Netherlands had rebelled against the Spanish. They were Protestant. The, the Belgians were Catholic. The war was being fought over whether Spain could continue to rule these countries. And there they meet a man called Guido Fawkes, who comes into our story for the first time. Now, he'd been also a soldier in the English army fighting against the Spanish in the Netherlands. But this English army was rather infamous. It had been led by William Stanley, and they'd been given command of two forts, including the key fort of Deventer. And they were told to help the Dutch by guarding these Dutch forts against the Spanish. They got into the front lines, they took over the forts, and then William Stanley changed sides and had the fort over to the Spanish. The Dutch really never forgave the English, understandably, for the loss of these two key forts. And Sir Guido Fawkes was a key officer in William Stanley's army, the army that had changed sides to support the Catholics in the wars in the Netherlands. Now, he'd been recommended for promotion to captain, and it also been part of the delegation that was sent to request a Spanish invasion to bring England back under, under Rome. Finally, they recruit a man called Thomas Percy. Now, he's John Wright's brother-in-law and Catesby's friend. He'd served with Northumberland in the Netherlands, and when Northumberland had been trying to befriend James I, because Northumberland was the leading Catholic noble of this time, but he, he was loyal, as it happens, to the Protestant James I, even though he was a Catholic, and he was trying to befriend the new king, he'd used Thomas Percy as a go-between. And so Thomas Percy is going to be very useful to the plotters, close to Northumberland, who doesn't know about the plot, and also has already socially met the king. And in our second video, we'll see how the plot develops.